All right, so today we need to talk about ground to ground projectiles. And this discussion is pretty short because it's just a small expansion of, on what we've already talked about with our horizontal projectiles. So for this discussion, we want to look at an object that completes the full parabola of motion and that parabola stinks. Let me try this one more time. Let's see. So this object is going to be launched up, it's going to reach the top of the parabola, and it's going to come back down. That's a little bit better, not still not great, but I think it'll work. So for our horizontal projectiles, we went from either the ground to the top of the projectile, okay, the top of the parabola, and that's what we did when we did our basketball physics lab. Or we went from the top of the parabola down to the ground, which is what we did in example set one. So now we want to look at what happens if I go from the ground up to this top, uh, the apex of the parabola, and also back down to the ground. So I want to look at this in the x and y direction separately. So we know that the acceleration in our x direction for something that is moving through the air as a projectile is going to be zero meters per second squared. So that means that the x component of our velocity is going to be the same throughout the entire motion. So for this uh, activity here, I want to think about going from the ground and moving to the right and then coming back down to the ground. So I would start here in the beginning with a velocity in the x direction. And no matter where I was along the parabola, that velocity would be the same in the x direction. So each of these little red arrows depicts the velocity in the x direction. And let's pretend that each of those arrows has the same magnitude. So I'm just doing this here quickly by hand. So I know they're not all perfect, but we're gonna pretend like those are all the same. So I'm looking here at our velocity in the x direction at any point along the parabola it would have the same magnitude here. So I'm gonna do all these red arrows and I'm gonna label them all VX. So technically this first one would be the initial, even though the initial would be the same as the velocity at any of these spots. So VX, 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 and then this last one would represent our V final X. All right. We also know that in the y direction, our acceleration is going to be our negative 10 meters per second squared. So in the y direction, our object is actually in free fall. It's doing the same thing that it did in unit one when I threw it straight up and it came straight back down. So I would start here in the beginning with some initial velocity in the y. That velocity in the y would get smaller and smaller as we went up the parabola until at the very top, our velocity in the y direction would be zero because that would be the point in which our object stops, turns back around and starts heading down towards the ground. So on the other side, all of my velocity arrows would be getting larger until I finally reach the ground at the largest velocity that I would have in that direction. So we have a positive V initial Y, and then we have positive V Y's anywhere we look uh, along the parabola on this side until I reach zero. And then on the way down, we have negative V Y's because the object has turned around and then has started heading back down towards the ground. So this matches our idea of having on this side a positive velocity and a negative acceleration, which indicated that I was slowing down, and that's what the object would be doing from the initial point of launch until it reached the top, it'd be slowing down. And then on the other side, as I go back down towards the ground, I have negative velocities and negative accelerations, which indicate that we are speeding up. And that is what the object would do from the apex down towards the ground. It would speed up towards the ground. Okay. So as I look at the scenario, my displacement in the y direction total, that would be zero meters because I'm starting here at the ground and I'm ending back down here at the ground. So my change in position for the total motion would be nothing, okay? It would be zero. Um, 
but I also have this point in the middle where I would have the maximum height reached, okay? So these uh, projectiles, when they're ground to ground, everything is super symmetrical. So it, it is a true parabola, which means that the time it takes to get from here to the top would be the same as the amount of time it takes for, uh, to get from the top to the bottom, okay? So if you're able to find this max height or you're given this max height, in theory, you could find the time it takes to get from here to the max height where the velocity in the y direction is zero and then multiply that by two to get the total time. So keep that in mind as you're answering some of these questions. Remember that this is a parabola and everything is super symmetrical, okay? So the only thing that really changes between this motion and our horizontal projectile motion that we've looked at is that now I have an initial and final velocity component in the beginning. I also have initial and final velocity component in the end. So when we look at our final and our initial velocities, both will have a triangle, both will have components, both will be at some angle from the ground, where in a horizontal we were starting or ending up here at the top, where our y velocity was zero, so either our final or our initial did not have any components. It would only have a velocity in the x direction. Um, something that's a little bit of an expansion on this that we'll see is we could look again at some of our questions where I am uh, throwing something off of a cliff. So let's say it's a cliff onto water again, like we did in our example in our last uh, set of notes. But instead of doing uh, projecting this object or throwing this object straight off of the cliff, I could do it at an angle up from the cliff. And if I did that, then it would no longer be a horizontal projectile, but it would be a projectile that was at some angle to the ground in the beginning. So then this object would make a little parabola here, okay? So this top piece would be like our ground-to-ground -ground projectile, and then it would have an extra bit down here as it moved down towards the water and hit the water at some angle here. So a question like this is um, like a combo of the two. It looks a lot like our horizontal projectiles that we did, but instead, now I'm gonna make this uh, ground to ground, and I'm, I'm doing it in air quotes when I say ground to ground, because I realize it's not ground to ground, but we would be making this parabola here in the beginning, but then we would just be continuing on the motion past that, okay? So again, the only difference here is that now I have uh, an X and Y component in the beginning, and I also have an X and Y component in the end. So just like example set one, where you had X and Y components in the end, you're going to treat these questions the same way, but you have to do that process both in the beginning and in the end. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Have a great week.